Charles Shapiro, the president of the Institute. I'm delighted to have you here. I'm even more delighted to have our candidates uh, for mayor here. Um, we just had the official coin toss. I hope, I hope you, you caught it there. And uh, Mr. DeMaio won. Let me give you, uh, I'm supposed to introduce and get out of the way. Um, so just a, 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 a few comments. Number one is, the, the focus so much has been on presidential elections, and that's normal, and we understand that. But in reality, whether you're in New York or Medellin, Colombia, or San Diego, what mayors do affects our lives every single day. And in many ways, we can't wait for federal government, central government to make decisions. We have to make decisions, and we do that through voting for mayor. And for that reason that uh, we are delighted to have Carl DeMaio and Bob Filner here so that we can vote in an informed way. Um, as an undecided voter, uh, I'm, delighted, I'm delighted to have them here and I'm anxious to sit down and, and let them get started. But first, I've, I've got a few people I need to introduce. Number one, Tom Fudge from KPBS who's gonna moderate this debate. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the law firm of McKenna, Long, and Aldridge has underwritten the cost of this debate, so we can put it on at no, no cost to you, and I want to thank them very much uh, for doing this, and I think it's great to give them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, thank you very much to the Institute of the Americas and to Ambassador Charles Shapiro for sponsoring this mayoral debate. I'm Tom Fudge of KPBS, and I'm very happy to welcome our two mayoral uh, candidates who will take a little time tonight to talk about a different subject, I think, and that's San Diego's relations with Mexico and with, with its large Hispanic community. And let me in, introduce them. Uh, to your left, you see uh, City Councilman Carl DeMaio. And Mr. DeMaio, DeMaio is a member of the San Diego City Council. He's a graduate of Georgetown University, and he later established two companies, uh, founded two companies called American Strategic Management Group and the Performance Institute. Carl is a Republican, and please give him a warm welcome. And uh, to your right is uh, Congressman Bob Filner. Now, Bob is a Democrat, and he has represented San Diego in Congress for 20 years. He now represents the 51st Congressional District. Bob has also served on the 
San Diego School Board and the San Diego City Council, and I think he's a graduate of Cornell. Do I have that right? You have that right. Okay, high above Cayuga's waters, and so give and a welcome to Bob Filner. And what, what degrees did I get there? <laughs> I can't remember. I knew once, but give Bob Filner a warm <laughs> welcome. And uh, just a, a little bit about the rules. You heard some of this from Mr. Shapiro. All questions tonight will come from the moderator. The candidates will not ask questions of each other. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. Uh, we will ask you to pose questions to the candidates, writing them on cards, as you've already been told. And again, legibility is very important. Um, and here in the beginning, each, each candidate is going to get two minutes a two-minute opening uh, statement, and at the end, they're going to get a two-minute closing statement. And uh, so we're going to start with Carl DeMaio because he won the coin toss. And uh, so I will put to him this Is question. Uh, what, uh, Mr. DeMaio, what do you as mayor feel you, ne you need to do to create good relations between San Diego and Tijuana or Mexico? And what do you feel you owe to our city's many Hispanic voters? Well, thank you very much. I'm proud to be here tonight uh, with the Institute of the Americas. We've got a great institute here at UCSD that really helps us frame policies that are beneficial to our city and our counterparts uh, in Mexico. I want to thank the Council General for attending tonight. Uh, it clearly represents uh, uh, the uh, uh, Mexican government's interest in this race. I appreciate that. And we really do need to have stronger ties and a collaborative relationship with our counterparts in Mexico because really we shouldn't be seeing the border as a boundary. Uh, we should not fear the border, but we should embrace our border and look for the opportunities to take the strengths on both sides to serve uh, both San Diegans uh, and uh, Mexicans in terms of how we empower them, how we build a stronger economy, and how we market our region as a mega region, drawing on the strengths of both sides. I don't think we've done a good enough job of that in the past. I'm also pleased to announce tonight that on August 29th and 30th, I will be leading a delegation of business leaders and civic leaders to Tijuana and Baja, California, to meet with our counterparts in business and in government to strengthen our ties and our relationships. And people say, well, why would you do this? You know, you have 89 days left in a campaign, and you're taking two days out of your time to go across the border to Mexico. That is how important this relationship is to the future of our economy. That's how important our Latino community is to the future of our city. And that's why I'm looking forward uh, to completing the job of fiscal reform as San Diego's next mayor, putting a close on the fiscal crisis that we've had over the past 10 years, and really looking for the opportunities to create jobs through a stronger economy, and of course, our partnership with Mexico, Tijuana, and Baja will be critically important in my administration's strategies for accomplishing that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carl DeMaio. And uh, same question to our other candidate, Bob Filner. What do you feel you need to do to create good relations between San Diego and Tijuana? What do you feel that uh, you as mayor owe to our Hispanic voters? Gracias, Tomas. Uh, buenas noches a todos. Uh, es, es un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Thank you for, to uh, UCSD. Thank you for the Institute of the Americas. It's great to be here. You know, uh, we are one of the luckiest cities, I think, in the world. We live in a true binational community. And that, uh, bi that binational nature of our community should be celebrated. It should be one of the most, the border should be one of the most exciting, dynamic, uh, really interesting places in our city. And, uh, it, it, and our relationship with Mexico is one of the most unfulfilled promises that we have here in San Diego. But uh, we haven't celebrated. You know, two-thirds of our citizens have not even crossed the border south once. We have to make sure that we see, and the mayor can take the lead role in that, that those relationships are strengthened by, in both personally and institutionally. We should make sure that our students, our teachers, our artists, of course our business people, have the kind of ties that are necessary to strengthen our city in so many ways. You know, we leave because of the, uh, the, uh, the way the border is structured right now, it's uh, the wait times that are so long and arbitrary. 
Uh, we leave because of the lack of business uh, that that creates. Six billion dollars on the table every year because of not having that border efficient, efficiency. We can't do that. As mayor, I intend to make sure that we use the uh, technology and that we have the staffing at that border crossings to make sure that we can do this and families can uh, meet and uh, the culture can be interchanged. That's what we have to do. I'm so proud of you, Carl. You're going to go to Mexico <laughs> in a few days. You know, I was just there yesterday with uh, Mayor uh, Bustamante and uh, when the, uh, the uh, EPA administrator signed a, a, the 2020 agreement uh, between the United States and Mexico for environmental cooperation, uh, I represented the border area all of Mexico, uh, uh, California for 20 years. I've been there dozens and dozens of times. I know, I've met all the presidents. Uh, we need someone in San Diego who knows the political system, who knows the culture, who knows how to relate, and, uh, and uh, can talk with uh, them. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bob Filner. And one, one more time, I'd like to encourage all members of the audience, if you would like to pose your own question to the candidates, uh, please get one of those cards and write your question down legibly. Uh, Sherry is in the back of the room with the uh, red outfit on, and she can gather your cards. But uh, we'll start, let, let me start out with, uh, with one question for both, and I'll pose it first to Bob Filner. Uh, some local jurisdictions in the United States have played a role in helping to enforce U.S. immigration laws. Do you feel as mayor that would be a role that you would like to play? Uh, Bob Filner. You know, the federal government has the role, uh, the prime role for enforcing immigration law. Uh, no police chief I have ever talked to, <laughs> no sheriff I have ever talked to wants that responsibility. They have uh, an incredible tough job of policing uh, the neighborhoods in our city. Immigration is a whole different uh, uh, set of laws, a whole different set of, exper uh, set of expertise, a whole different approach. So uh, we don't want the local authorities uh, enforcing those laws. Uh, where it has occurred, it has led to racial profiling, it has led to abuse of uh, citizens, it has led to, uh, to really uh, uh, ill will between the uh, Latino community and uh, the city authorities. So uh, as mayor, we are going to enforce our laws, but we are not, we are going to leave the, the, uh, the enforcement of uh, immigration laws to the proper federal authorities. Okay, thank you. And uh, Carl DeMaio, how would you answer that same question? Well, first and foremost, uh, my job as mayor is to ensure that our neighborhoods are kept safe. Public safety will be my top priority. Immigration law enforcement is the job of the federal government. Uh, and I have to prioritize and make sure that we are focusing on safety. Now, the extent to which someone commits a crime and they are not in the United States with documentation, we will use immigration laws as part of a larger set of enforcement strategies to get criminals off the street, plain and simply. And you know, I, I look at the Latino community and they agree with this approach because what we have seen are violent predators criminals reintroduced into those neighborhoods to prey on other Latinos when they're here without documentation. So to the extent to which we can use enforcement of immigration rules and a better coordination with the federal government to keep criminals off the street and to keep our neighborhood safe, you bet it will be one of our strategies. But we will not, in my administration, use any sort of racial profiling or decide that we are going to usurp the role of the federal government for immigration enforcement. That is not our role. Our role is public safety, and that will be the extent to which we use immigration rules. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, let me ask uh, another question that is kind of along the same lines as the last one. Uh, there are so many ways that Tijuana and San Diego have to coordinate uh, their services and the things that they do, and so I'll put this question first to you, Carl DeMaio. What would your police uh, department need to do to protect San Diegans from crimes that may cross the border from Tijuana? Well, first and foremost, when you elect me mayor, I will reach out to Bob Filner and ask that he go back across the border and build relationships, uh, as he has said he's so fond of. Uh, I will take you up on that offer, uh, Congressman. Uh, but the real challenge is again, having those strong relationships. Uh, and uh, Mayor Bustamante, and I believe his administration, they are receptive 
but we need a mayor in San Diego that is looking at cross-border coordination. And we need a police chief and a police department that really has strong ties across the border uh, to law enforcement. Uh, we have crimes that start in Tijuana and come across the border and vice versa. And that's why we have to have coordination and cooperation. Uh, one of the things I'll talk about tonight is the use of technology in border crossings. We've not had the sort of collaboration that we need to take advantage of modern technology to speed the uh, 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 border crossing uh, and reduce the cycle time on, on crossing, uh, but doing so in a safe manner. And so that's where I think we should start, is getting law enforcement on both sides to feel comfortable and uh, on the same page as it relates to using technologies for border security and border uh, crossing. Uh, Bob Filner, same question. Well, I'm glad that Carl recognizes my superiority on this issue, so uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, a good leader but, builds uh, a good team. Right. Uh, and a bad leader can't assemble a good team. Uh, you know, uh, the cooperation that, uh, that has to be maintained in a very close relationship starts with the mayor. You got the mayors have to know each other. The city councils ought to know each other. You know, when I was on the city council before, we used to have regular meetings with the uh, Tijuana City Council. Uh, we used to have our meetings once, one month in uh, San Diego, next in uh, Tijuana, and vice versa. So uh, we, we ought to reestablish that. And it just sets a tone for cooperation. And certainly, we, our, our police departments and our fire departments are cooperating. When we had the major fires uh, in, in San Diego over the last uh, few years, you know, the bomberos of, uh, of Tijuana were here helping us. And we should have, uh, if I were mayor at the time, I, I, I try to have a big press conference welcoming them and, 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 and making sure people knew that the Mexican firefighters were helping in our, in our very uh, you know, life and death situation. And, and that has to occur more. If our uh, public safety departments are working together and actually helping one another, then I think the population see each other in a much more uh, friendly way, cooperative way, respectful way, and then we can move forward in the way I described earlier. All right, thank you very much. And uh, I'm starting to get some of your questions. And I do notice that some of these questions do get off the subject of US-Mexico relations. Later in our conversation, I think that'll be fine. We can open it up a little bit. But for now, we'll stick to uh, our main subject here at the Institute of the Americas. And uh, my question to Bob Filner, um, very often I go to uh, Fashion Valley Mall and I see lots of people from Mexico shopping there. In what ways do you feel San Diego's economy is intertwined with that of Tijuana? And what can we do to better to improve our economic relations? Well, the fact of the matter is we are intertwined. And certainly before 9-11, uh, those shopping malls from, you know, the, from uh, Bonita Vista up to Fashion Valley and into La Jolla, I, I think Fashion Valley used to have 50% Mexican shoppers. Uh, so we, as, as a uh, retail economy, we're very, very intertwined with Mexico. We have since uh, uh, lost a lot of that uh, economic uh, potential. As I mentioned earlier, the Chamber of Commerce thinks that we leave $6 billion out of our economy because of the inefficiency of that border. Uh, people just won't cross if they have to take three, four hours, or it's so arbitrary they don't even know. So we have to, the, the, uh, the decrease of waiting times must be our chief priority. And I always argue to, to Homeland Security and other authorities, efficiency is security. If you are efficient, you will be more secure. Long lines doesn't mean that we are safe. And I will tell you, uh, we have tried uh, better staffing. We have had uh, experiments where we had all 24 lanes open 24 hours. The waiting time was 15 minutes. We know I can go through Copenhagen Airport in seven seconds with a biometric smart card. We should be doing that at the border. That, if you have a smart card, and I would do it on a voluntary basis, you have 100% guarantee that the retina or the fingerprint is that person. So we can, in fact, enhance the speed and enhance our security at the same time, and that's what we ought to be doing. And I think getting mayors together across the border, getting our chambers together across the border is the way that we have to pressure the federal government, who hasn't really figured that out yet uh, on the executive branch level, to okay. uh, make those changes. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, same question to Carl DeMaio. Well, apparently they haven't figured it out on the legislative branch level either while you've been in Congress for 20 years, Mr. Filner, because the border has been in your district, and you have heard from business owners and residents alike that the border needs investment. 
and you have failed to build the sort of coalitions and relationships in Washington to get the job done. It has been 20 years, and this has been your congressional district, that you have been able to play a role in bringing those federal dollars down, in getting the sort of collaboration and partnerships that we need. And you never really expressed a whole lot of interest in it, and you haven't really produced any results. Now you're running for mayor, you're before an audience that's very concerned about the issue of expediting border crossings, and now suddenly you have a renewed interest. San Diegans need a mayor who will produce results. And in my administration, expediting the border crossings in a secure and safe way will be a top priority because we are leaving money on the table. And in talking to businesses, they have said that the number one challenge to investment and cross-border partnerships is the wait time. And so those technologies that we can use, and by the way, the technology for uh, the border crossings, they're being pioneered right here at UCSD. The IT Institute, right here at UCSD, has the application and the technology for how we can speed up the border, but we don't have the buy-in from this administration in San Diego, nor from some of our counterparts in Mexico, and that will be one of my top priorities, to make sure that we make border crossings faster, better, cheaper, and more secure. Okay, as the moderator, I am going to reserve the right to occasionally allow a rebuttal in a situation like that. Uh, uh, Bob Filner, uh, uh, Mr. DeMaio said that you really took very little interest in the problems at the border. Would you like to respond to that? You know, for a guy who's been on the city council his first term and uh, who just discovered the word Mexico, uh, he obviously doesn't know the reality of the situation. You want to go, uh, you, you, you may cross the border, I guess, for the first time down in San Isidro uh, coming up. Uh, the biggest expansion in, of any border crossing in this country is happening right now and it's happening because of funds that we got in Congress. I happen to be co-chair of the uh, Border Caucus in the, uh, in the Congress, and we are working on all of those issues. You want to get from uh, the border crossing in Otay Mesa, I'll show you where it is if you're not sure, uh, to, uh, to San Diego freeways, you have to go on a, on a route 905. Who do you think got the money for 905 to, to, do, to do that? Uh, you want a border infrastructure fund so the city doesn't have to pay for these things? Who do you think put that in the national legislature? Uh, Carl, you know, I would go to the Congress. Uh, there's, there's about uh, 15 members of us who are members of the Border Caucus who represent border districts. Uh, that's not a lot out of 435. And the rest of the country, many of the members of which follow your, uh, your demagoguery here in, uh, in, uh, up until tonight uh, of uh, really hitting at the border and hitting at... Uh, at, at the evilness of the border, they have not supported the Border Caucus. And we haven't, we haven't convinced them, frankly, that this is something that's good for all America, that those waiting times be reduced. But I will tell you, and everybody in here who's worked in this area knows, there is nobody in the Congress of the United States of America who has worked harder to improve the, uh, the relationships between our two countries and who's had the results, not only in roads, not only in border sewage infrastructure. Who do you think got built the uh, border treatment, the sewage treatment plan at the border uh, uh, 20 years ago before you even heard of San Diego? So, you know, okay. this, uh, this is uh, an issue where the reality is clear and someone new to this picture, I guess we have to understand yeah, why. Yeah, Bob, the reality oh, okay. is clear. The wait times are absolutely unacceptable for a regional economy. Two hours is unacceptable. And you have failed in Washington to lead a coalition to get the investments and the results that taxpayers deserve. Okay, you can well, stand uh, up here and talk about it, but your record is very clear. We still have a border crossing crisis that is undermining our ability to invest and achieve economic prosperity. Well, and, let, and let, in let, the let last four this, years, what have you done? Have you helped me at all in Congress to, to, to put together that coalition? Where is your leadership on I'm the city council? You by okay. you Where home. is your leadership on the city council <laughs> okay, for the last four years to help me do that? I'm helping candidates. you by sending Let you home me, uh, and send, help and send uh, another congressman to Washington who will work with the mayor and will work with his colleagues in a collaborative way. Okay, uh, let me ask another question. <laughs> and this one, I, I can't recall who goes first, but I think I'll put this one first to Carl DeMaio. And this is one, this is a question that we got from an audience member. Uh, is there anything that you can learn from the experience of other border cities, such as El Paso? Uh, Carl DeMaio, what would you say to that? I think we can, we can learn from all cities. And what I would do as my style and my approach in the Performance Institute was to go across the country on common challenges that government agencies were having and ask other government managers who solved this problem. 
Because obviously we all have these common challenges. Some of you have already innovated the solutions. And so we have to have a mayor who's going to be far more collaborative and will listen to experts. When we developed our pension reform ballot measure, People said it was impossible to reform government pensions, that we should just accept our fate. I said, no, we're going to get the experts in the room and we're going to work on it. And that's one of the reasons why I've met and spent time with experts on both sides of the border in developing my economic plan, which I released in January, that talks about the investments we need to make to take advantage of the mega region. Listening is going to be a core element of my administration, listening to leaders here locally, listening to my counterparts across the border, and across the country for the challenges and the solutions to those challenges. You cannot be a good leader unless you listen and then act. And I think that's what our constituents expect, is that people are going to thoughtfully consider ideas, whether it's a Democrat or idea or a Republican idea, I don't care. If it's a good idea that can help San Diego, that can create jobs, I'm all in. Okay, thank you very much, Carl DeMaio. Uh, Bob Filner, what can we learn from other border cities? Yeah, I think the question was on border cities, and uh, I guess unlike Carl, I've been to, uh, to El Paso, I've been to Calexico, I've been to, El Paso, uh, to Brownsville, I've been to Laredo, I've been to Nogales. There is a lot to learn. There is a lot to learn. Uh, the relationships that uh, have developed between the two uh, cities that uh, are in Mexico and uh, in, uh, in the state, usually Texas, uh, are very, very close. The, uh, the, not only the official relationships, but the unofficial relationships, the relationships between the different levels of government, they're very, very close. And we simply have not developed them in the same way here. Uh, they have problems, and we work with each other. As I said, I'm co-chair of the Border Caucus in the Congress. We work with each other to try to learn each from, uh, from them. We are, by the way, we have some unique situations here. We are the busiest border crossing in the world. And we have a very constrained area. And it's uh, difficult, given that, to, uh, to, to, mobile, to, to, to when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of people moving across per day, it's uh, very difficult to get that down. The, uh, the executive branch, both Republican and Democrat, have been very reluctant to uh, use the technology. I think they're afraid to, to, for the rest of America to see a quick crossing. I think terrorists are coming across, or drugs, or uh, illegals. But uh, we have to show that. Uh, that leadership can, in fact, change that situation. And I would form a coalition, as I said earlier, with all the mayors across the border, with the four governors who have not had the kind of impact they've had on, uh, they should have on the, uh, on the legislature and the, and the executive branch, and, and improve the situation for all the border communities. Okay, thank you. Um, this next question is from our audience, and uh, perhaps it can be interpreted in different ways. I will simply read it as it's written. How will you deal with prejudices and misconceptions that have prevented a better relationship with Mexico? Bob Filner. I'm sorry, just start from the beginning again for a second. How will you as mayor oh, okay. deal with prejudices and misconceptions that have prevented a better relationship with Mexico? You know, you have to model that behavior and through your policies, but uh, you know, through your personal actions, uh, first, first and foremost. Uh, I've represented uh, the border area, both on the uh, school board, uh, sorry, both on the city council and the uh, Congress, in the Congress. I've had a 65 percent almost uh, uh, Latino uh, population in those districts. And uh, that confidence that people have in my representation comes from, I think, an ability to see people uh, in all our diversity and tap all of our resources and tap all of the talents that we have in that diversity. They have seen me work my whole life for civil rights, whether it's against segregation in the South, whether it's against racial profiling. They have seen me in marches uh, to make sure that people are treated as human beings. They have seen me expand businesses. When I was on the city council, and I haven't seen one thing from my, uh, from my uh, opponent over here, uh, we increased the so-called affirmative action hiring in our, in our contracts from less than 1% to over 7. Now, 7 does not sound like much, but I will tell you, it's 7 times what we had before. And when I left the city council, went back to 1. And I think it's still there today. So what have you done, Carl, to uh, help that situation? What have you done with all your experience to uh, help that situation? Uh, oh, by the way, you know, Ronald Reagan is one of my favorite presidents. He, he said uh, at, at one point in the debate, I will not hold the youth and inexperience of my opponent against him. Okay, and uh, 
Just want to remind candidates that when you see the red <laughs> sign go up down here, this gentleman is holding, that does mean your time is up. Uh, question to you, Carl DeMaio, how do you deal with the prejudices and misconceptions that have prevented a better relation with Mexico? Well, again, back on topic, uh, I think that we need to demonstrate the success of collaboration across the border. And that's why leading the delegation down uh, to Baja, meeting with our counterparts, trying to build those, those relationships with business leaders and show San Diegans that the border should not be feared but rather embraced, that it's a strategic opportunity, that your mayor sets the tone, the tenor. Your mayor can use the bully pulpit to communicate why and the benefits of having greater collaboration. Uh, secondly, we need to build an administration that reflects the diversity of San Diego. That is a strength. It's been how I've built my companies. It's been how I built my uh, city council office. Uh, and in my administration, we will be inclusive. Everyone will have a voice, and everyone will be sitting around the table. Uh, and finally, I think that in terms of contracting, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to hit those goals, uh, Congressman, when as you and your, your supporters have constantly tried to stop managed competition and competitive bidding, fair and open competition for city services. I want our small businesses to have opportunities to bid on city contracts and city functions where they can save money and they can improve performance for taxpayers. You, however, have blocked that so that our small business owners don't even have an opportunity to submit bids. We have to have a more fair and open competitive bidding process at City Hall. In my administration, we will achieve that and there will be opportunities for all types of small businesses and we will place an emphasis on diversity of the, our supply chain. So why haven't okay. you done that as a member of the city council? Uh, You're complaining I'm that I didn't do anything in Congress. Proposition you C, said it wasn't done. Why haven't it been done? Uh, Mr. You Filner. haven't lifted a finger in this. I would like uh, <laughs> the voice of San Diego, by the way, to uh, ask Mr. DeMaio and ask me, what is the uh, percentage of Latino staff members that we have in our official offices? Ask us that, and then we'll see what kind of commitment we have to, uh, to uh, hiring the diversity of, in our... In well, our well, well, I think the, he the can... The answer is actually two out of seven in my office. Two uh, out of seven are Latino. Okay, well, he can ask that question after the debate is, is complete. Uh, when we're done two with the debate... Two out of seven. Debate, my chief of staff is Latino. My chief policy advisor is Latina. Well, you know, since you're, on that, two, uh, so. since you're on that <laughs> subject, Carl DeMaio, I do have a question for you. I think it's fair to say that a fair number of Hispanic voters in the United States are... Um, are a little bit cool to the Republican Party and the person who's leading the charge, Mitt Romney, has said himself that if we don't appeal better to Hispanics, uh, we're doomed. And, and what do you say to a person who says, as a member of, a Repu of the Republican Party, uh, you immediately are kind of have a couple strikes against you when you're trying to appeal to Latino voters? Well, it's certainly something that, that is out there because I think there have been many damaging things that have been said on both sides. Uh, but I, what I would challenge is what is the record? And what are, what are the ideas and the vision for the future? And my vision is one where we bring San Diegans together to move our city forward, to create middle class jobs, jobs that allow you uh, to send your kids to college, uh, to afford the gift of home ownership for the first time, to retire comfortably, uh, that's a, a, an agenda, a vision that unites rather than divides. We have a vision of clean and safe neighborhoods where we have public safety. We have a vision of quality schools where children are not limited by the zip code they live in, but all children have an opportunity to grow, develop, and achieve their greatest potential. Mm -hmm. That speaks to the core of the Latino family concerns. And that shouldn't be driven by a goal of achieving support amongst Latinos, but rather serving all communities, regardless of socioeconomic background. And that's exactly my agenda. That is exactly my record. Pointed out by the Prop D battle, when Mr. Filner and his friends supported a tax increase uh, on working families in San Diego, I stood up and built a coalition to protect our working families because it wasn't right to take and impose a regressive tax, a sales tax increase on working families in San Diego to pay for the mistakes of the politicians. Okay. Time and time again, I've stood up for our working families and I believe that that resonates in the Latino community because it speaks to their concerns and their struggles.
Okay, Bob Filner, how do you feel that your values and the value of your party appeal to Latino, vote, Latino voters? You know, to know where someone is, is going, I don't know where they've been. Mr. DeMaio's is part of a party and the wing of the party that favored Prop 187 in this country, in this state, that uh, f tried to further further restrictions on Prop 187, that supported the incredibly backward policies of the state of uh, Arizona. Uh, that's what the par that, that party that Carl belongs to and the wing of the party that has taken over San Diego, that's why they have endorsed him. They feel very comfortable with an anti-immigrant, uh, anti-civil rights pr uh, platform. I come from a different party and a different background. I had the honor, by the way, of meeting uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when I was 13 years old. By 15, I was organizing demonstrations with him. By 18, I was in jail. Uh, I was one of the, uh, yeah, we should go from a, uh, from a city that has a police chief to a city where we started our career in jail, but for fighting for civil rights. Fighting for civil rights. And when we got out of that, out of that uh, uh, jail experience where I served a couple months, the Supreme Court not only overturned our convictions, but overturned the whole legal structure of segregation. And I said, wow, at age 18, we can change American history if we get together. It's no accident that when I came out to California to teach at San Diego State, by the way, I got a PhD at Cornell, just FYI. Uh, uh, one okay. of the first things I did was find Cesar Chavez and work and march with him. Uh, whether I've been on a school board, whether we have furthered the participation of all students in, uh, in quality education, where we have gotten administrators of all races and colors onto, uh, into the school system, from the city council where we did the same thing, uh, in the Congress, if you look at uh, my staff, it reflects completely the diversity which, uh, of, uh, of the community I represent. So to know where someone is going, know where they've been. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Filner. <laughs> this is a question that goes to both of you. I'll put it to uh, Bob Filner first. What will you do to help increase San Diego's international trade to Mexico, to Latin America, and to the world? Well, it is a key issue. And, and it's certainly one of the areas that we can get out of the uh, recession that we've, that we've been in in San, in San Diego and the nation, and we don't have to wait for other, the whole nation to uh, somehow come out of that recession. There's things we can do right here, whether it's expanding the port, whether it's increasing our commitment to alternative energy, and increasing our trade with Mexico. The first thing that has to be done, as I said earlier, is change the efficiency at the border. You have got to make that border efficient. We know how to do it, and we have got to get new kinds of pressures and new kind of coalitions uh, uh, to work to make sure that happens. For example, trade has, uh, there are now 36 states in our nation where Mexico is the chief trading partner with that state, and yet their congressional and senatorial representatives uh, vote many times against the, uh, the border caucus in trying to make that border more efficient. They have got to be, to make, be uh, they have got to be made aware that their working people, their factories, their economy depends on increasing the trade and making that more efficient. That's what the job that uh, I'm going to do as mayor. We're going to organize other mayors. We're going to organize the governors, and we're going to make sure that everybody understands that our our interest in reviving trade is their interest also. Okay, thank you. And same question to uh, Carl DeMaio. Thank you. And before I tackle international trade, I, I do want to talk about the political parties. You know, San Diegans, I think Californians and Americans, they're sick and tired of the politics of division. And what I did was I laid out an ambitious agenda to create middle class jobs, quality schools, to serve the interests of our working families, which I believe these are the issues that are of paramount importance to the Latino community. Mr. Filner chose to answer his question by focusing on the past and division. At some point, we have to move past the past and embrace the policies that have a meaningful impact on today's working families and create a brighter future for tomorrow. People okay. are sick and tired of that sort of politics, and I don't think that we ought to have a mayor who practices that sort of divisive politics. Now, as it relates to international trade, I agree with the congressman. The border is absolutely paramount in terms of expedi expediting the crossings in a secure way 
uh, using technology, using best management practices, and investing in the infrastructure. But there's other ways that we can enhance international trade. Obviously, expanding our port and making sure that we are absolutely optimizing the Port of San Diego, which really is underutilized right now. I'm pleased that I'm supported by the San Diego Port Tenants Association, the actual businesses, the shipbuilders, uh, the folks that carry the cargo, uh, the, the businesses that use the port and are trying to invest and expand. Mr. Filner criticizes the port and he points to the people running the port as his supporters. It's kind of inconsistent with having a fresh new approach to expanding international trade. And that's okay. why I am pleased to be supported by the men and women, the small business owners, who are working in the port and trying to expand their facilities and operations. Okay, you know, this, this uh, question of the border crossings uh, is coming up quite a bit in our questions from, from the audience. And so let me dwell on this just a little bit longer. This question asks, and Carl DeMaio will start with you, what specifically can the mayor do to improve the border crossing since border, border crossing is controlled by the federal government and Homeland Security? Well, first and foremost is uh, my support and my vote to advance the third border crossing, the permits and the investments necessary. Second, the uh, local roads that serve those crossings are inadequate. And so I've spoken to the, the businesses down there, a lot of the operators, uh, those long lines of trucks. We have to have local infrastructure along the border to support the, 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 the commerce that comes across. Uh, third, technology. And that means that you have to have a mayor who's going to break through some of the bureaucratic resistance to the technology. Again, I will cite, UCSD is working on the technology as we speak. They have come up with the solutions. But where we don't get the implementation is because we don't have trust and collaboration uh, across the border between the Federal Department of Homeland Security, local officials, state officials, and of course our counterparts uh, in Baja. We have to build trust we have to get those innovations implemented. And as mayor, I'm going to continue to make that a priority because technology will be one of the key ways that we maximize uh, those crossings and make sure that we facilitate the goods, the people, the, the, the trade in the most efficient way possible. Bob Filner, what specifically can you do as mayor to improve border crossings? Well, but let me first say, uh, you know, I agree that we have to move ahead. Uh, I will ask the audience who was the first one who pointed to the past <laughs> and his, the friends or something that he said about who was not doing the job. But So uh, he talks about uh, not, uh, not moving ahead, but he creates the havoc and the divisiveness uh, while he says it. And Carl, you cannot disown your party. They have enveloped you. They have taken you over. You have worked them every, every inch. They are a party that does not believe that that uh, the people of color in this nation deserve an equal chance. They do not believe that Mexico is worthy of respect as a nation, and you are embraced by that party and you accept their support. What we can do as a mayor here in San Diego, as I've said several times, is that we know what to do to increase the efficiency of the border. I mean, the people in here who, 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 who work every day at the border know how to do it. It is increased staffing. Uh, and oh, by the way, the new, uh, the new configuration that we will have will have but twice as many lanes because we we're going to use what they call stacked, uh, stacked booths to do that, but and increased technology. My job as mayor will be getting the mayors of the border together, the governors of the four border states together, working with our Mexican counterparts. Uh, I know the Mexican congressmen across the border. I know the governors of the 10 Mexican states that border this. We have to make sure that we have a bi-national, bicameral uh, kind of uh, coalition at different levels of government that puts more pressure on the federal government and the American people to understand what our border can do. It's very exciting to be at the border here in San Diego, but when you go to Congress or you go to uh, Kansas, they don't know anything that's going on. The job as mayor is to try to organize and channel that support in a far more effective way. Okay, thank you. Uh, now here's a question which uh, is interesting given what's going on right now. Should San Diego Tijuana compete for a future Summer Olympics? <laughs> Bob Filner. No, we should cooperate. That is, why not, why not have, uh, why not have, for the first time probably, a bi-national Olympics? 
I, is that what I, I think I think that may be the sense of the question. Well, you said we should compete against each other. Well, I, you I, mean I, compete together? Uh, compete together. Okay. I think I, is the I sense apologize. Of the question. Hey, yeah. If it's down selected to just the two of us in the final round, we both win. <laughs> okay. It's true. <laughs> if that's the question, well, if I rest my case. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> if it's Tijuana or, or San Diego, we both win, no matter who who wins the actual. No, it should not be either or competing. I agree. I agree. It should but be you're looking at the both of us. Way. Can you imagine the excitement, the appeal, the uh, you know the what what we were talking about in our opening statements about the energy of the border? If we were doing this as a uh, as as a joint uh, as, a, as as a joint uh, uh, applicants, that is. We do it together. You know, we have one of the greatest uh, Olympic training centers uh, in my district, in Chula Vista. Uh, the state of Baja has built an incredible Olympic training center there. Uh, we can be training with each other. We got boats, they got w b uh, better uh, swimming pools and track. Uh, imagine that the teams are trained in that binational way. Uh, and uh, our, uh, uh, while uh, the Olympics are being uh, uh, prepared for, and that we, build together the infrastructure of, a, of two cities, the mega region, that we know in many cases the, uh, the resulting impact of the Olympic Games has been far better infrastructure uh, in, both, in the city, and in this case two cities, and the way that they interact with each other. I think it would be an incredible, exciting thing to do uh, that I will lead as mayor. Okay, uh, Carl DeMaio, what do you think? Absolutely, it would be great to be on the same team and competing as a region, and of course I think that's what the question in, uh, was intentioned on. But what if you had jobs created on one side of the border? Is that something that Tijuana should be upset if we have jobs here? Or San Diego should be upset if they got jobs, if a company moved down there? No, we should be happy because we do have the synergies and the spillover effect. That's the way we need to start looking at this. So if the International Olympic Committee said, hey, we've narrowed down all the cities to just two. It's either going to be Tijuana or it's going to be San Diego. I would still consider that a victory because when we see economic investment and progress on the other side of the border, it does help our economy. And I think that's one of the misconceptions we have to overcome. And the mayor needs to, needs to be part of that chorus of explaining why investment and expansion on both sides of the border creates a synergy a spillover effect and prosperity on both sides. Uh, but it would be great to be uh, a mega region competing uh, for the possibility of hosting uh, the Olympic Games. Uh, it would make both sides uh, of, our, of our border very proud. Okay, well we've got uh, many very good questions from our audience. Let me get, see if I can get through as many as I can. Here's one, and we'll start with Hugh Carl DeMaio. Uh, this is sort of a two-part question. Do you support the DREAM Act, which would provide legal status to undocumented immigrants brought here as children? And what would you do as mayor to help these immigrant children achieve the American dream? I want to make sure that every child has an opportunity to receive a quality education. And that needs to be our focus. Unfortunately, legislators passed the DREAM Act without providing the funding revenues, the funding source, to support that program. And so my concern is that you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. I think it's a very th poorly thought out program even though the intentions are well placed. My plan is to make sure that in San Diego that our K through 12 system is strong and that we continue to partner with our local universities to have strong universities and to really see as many people come to San Diego as possible to learn so that they can be part of that 21st century economy. Uh, the education is the stepping stone to the American dream. And right now you have more than half of Latinos concentrated in the bottom percentage of, perf uh, of schools. And the disparity, Council President Tony Young and I yesterday released a report uh, by USD that shows a dramatic disparity in educational achievement across council districts and across socioeconomic groups. On average, citywide, a third of our schools are not meeting standards. But in District 8, it's 75% of the schools are not meeting standards. That is absolutely unacceptable. And so when I said earlier that no child should be limited in their future by the zip code they reside in or their socioeconomic background, I mean it. And that's the education system that we ought to build. And there are a lot of strategies that are already funded 
maximized, we can achieve better results. Uh, and I think on the DREAM Act, the intention is well, well placed, but it's not funded, and I'm very concerned about access to education and the impact that it would have. Okay, Bob Filner, uh, DREAM Act. Well, Mr. DeMaio is sadly misinformed. I mean, the DREAM Act did not pass the Congress because the Republican Party did not vote for it. Uh, I fight, voted for it. I voted for it. It is not a program. It doesn't exist because people who give lip service to equality do not actually vote. It is important to the young people in this country, especially those who have come to this country through no fault of their own. They've been here since they were two, three, six, eight years old. Uh, and they produce well in school. And they, are, they want to go to college and become productive members of our society. They are not eligible under the laws that your party supports that uh, allows them to get scholarships or other aid or even uh, go to uh, public universities and get the, uh, a, a lower tuition. We need the DREAM Act. Uh, much of uh, some of the best aspects of it were incorporated into an executive order that uh, President Obama has just, uh, just released uh, a couple months ago, which said that uh, we would not, in the case of young people who have been here and who have not committed any crimes, that we will not uh, enforce the deportation uh, regulations and we will allow them, in fact, to attend college. That is a good move. But we need the DREAM Act. And, uh, uh, you know, you talk a good game, Carl. Uh, I, I don't know one thing that you have done in the three and a half years you've been in office that, uh, that has moved us forward on any of the equality, of any of the access to opportunity, of any access to the education that uh, many of us have been working for our whole lives. Our whole lives we have been working for this. You run for mayor and all of a sudden we hear that you're interested in access. Uh, you have not done anything, and you are not committed to it, and your supporters don't give a damn about it. Uh, okay, I'm going to allow a short rebuttal from Mr. DeMaio it, again, after that. The hysteria, the divisiveness. We need to be talking about jobs. We need to be talking about education reform. We need to be talking about pension reform. We need to be talking about restoring public safety services, all of which I have a record of actually getting done, Bob. You've spent 20 years in Congress. The reason why I think most people sent you to Congress is they wanted to get you out of San Diego. You were already creating enough damage. So when you look at your legislative record, you talk about getting the border mayors together. You talk about getting people to work together. But sir, your record in Washington is one of division where your own party hasn't been able to work with you. And so to introduce that back into San Diego would be catastrophic. In tonight's debate, we should be talking about specific strategies to enhance coordination across the border, to create jobs, to create quality schools, to serve underprivileged neighborhoods, to restore services, particularly police and public safety and anti-gang services, all of which, by the way, I lay out in a 249-page detailed step-by-step -step plan. I ask you, where have you been? You say that the port isn't maximizing its potential, but you have been in Congress. What have you done to bring funding and investment back to our port? You say the border is not working, and I agree, but you and the federal government had the best opportunity to invest in that border, to make sure we had technologies, and to overcome those challenges, and what have you done? Okay. You cannot point to those Do accomplishments, but you can point uh, you to get, a record uh, of rhetoric. Okay, thank, short rebuttal from Bob Filner, then we end Still, it. no answer on the DREAM Act, but, uh, you know, avoid, avoid, <laughs> avoid. But, uh, you know, and, and Carl, you, there's not a sentence that goes by where you don't mention reform, reform. You know what reform means, by the way? Real estate for Manchester. I mean, that's what the whole program is about, real estate for Manchester. And I will tell you, Carl, you want to, you wanna, let's start listing the accomplishments, whether it's the San Isidro border, uh, uh, the, the border crossing that is now being funded, as uh, will be Otay Mesa and, uh, and Calexico in my district. Uh, we can look to Route 905, which we just, uh, we just uh, uh, cut the ribbon on to uh, bring the border, uh, uh, the ports of entry into, uh, into alliance with the, uh, with the freeway system. We just, cut, we just signed uh, yesterday in Tijuana, uh, and I'm glad they're going to welcome you there, that uh, uh, we just signed the 2020 agreement between Mexico and the United States to, for environmental, uh, re environmental reform. Uh, we can go on and on. Commun uh, community groups along the border have been funded by the, uh, the ability of myself to get grants. The, the, the single most important issue was I was elected with Congress was the raw sewage that flowed across the border at about tw 25 million gallons a day. We had in the, in the United States, 
the only place in this country, I think, where raw sewage flowed through the neighborhoods of an, of an American city was in San Diego. Guess who got the money to build the, San, uh, to, to build the border treatment plant there that has made the quality of life for everybody so much better? Okay, uh, we'll have to leave it at that. Uh, I do have another question. Actually, I've got a bunch of other questions, but let me read this one. Uh, starting with Bob Filner, does the Maquila Dora industry hurt or help San Diego? Well, I think it's a it's a it's a mixed blessing right now, but uh, we have to build on on uh, on on the tr on the potential for trade. We have to build on uh, on our com joint economic interests. Uh, we have to make sure uh, that, in fact, Carl said earlier, anything that goes on on one side helps the other. Anything yeah, that's not true. If if a maquila door is built and they dump their toxic waste outside because there isn't the kind of environmental uh, regulation that might be and it gets into the Tijuana River, guess who suffers? If the, the uh, maquilador has promised high wages and people leave the interior of Mexico to come to work there and they don't get the kind of wages that they thought they would get, guess what? They look across the border. Guess what? We have more Im uh, illegal immigration. So not all activity is created equal. And what we have to do is make sure that when we have these trade agreements, between two nations, that they protect environmental standards and they protect the rights of working people. Well, let me remind you, there are working people in the world, Carl. Uh, Carl said he was supported by the businesses at the port. Well, you know, the guys and gals who load the ships and unload them and who work the docks are supporting me. So uh, we can, you know, argue where the real support is. But where working people are involved, that's where I'm going to be. Not with the businesses, not with the developers, not with the Doug Manchesters of the world, not with those who, uh, who have controlled this city for the last 50 years. They are worried that a Bob Filner administration ends their dominance. That's why they're supporting Carl DeMaio. Okay, Carl DeMaio, does the Maquiladora industry help or hurt San Diego? It helps San Diego. It's good for both sides, uh, economy. What we're seeing right now is a shift in the economy where uh, Chinese manufacturing is actually starting to flow right back to Tijuana. And there are huge opportunities. And this has just happened over the last four and five years. And we need to be prepared to jump on this and, and market San Diego and Tijuana as a mega region. Uh, so it unqualified, it helps, and it can be done right. But let me, go, again, go back to results. Because I think San Diegans, Californians, Americans, they're sick and tired of politicians who, during election season, talk about what they're going to do, talk about what they say they've done. But when you look at the results, let's review the bidding, Bob. You say that you've solved so many things, but the sewage is still flowing, the border is still clogged, and our port is still underutilized. You come here and you say that you're going to get all this done. You've been in Washington for 20 years. You say that you can build coalitions and bring people together, yet in Washington you have not been able to address these issues because we can go down to the border tonight we can be there tomorrow. We can go to the port, and you will see that we are still faced with major problems. And have you lifted a finger once? In you four years on the city council, have you lifted your finger once if, to help, if we to help any of those efforts? Washington, any of those efforts? If we had Tell me one thing that you have done to help create that coalition. One thing that you have done. If we had a congressman in One Washington, thing that you have done. I will tell you one thing. We, got, we were able to move forward on the international airport at Rodriguez Field, which will improve our trade and our tourism for both sides, creating a regional air system. We've been able to move forward on the third border cro crossing. We've been able to put priority on local roads down there. And by the way, we're still trying to work out the funding for the connectors on many of the projects that Mr. Filner says he's gotten all the funding for. Apparently, you know, we haven't been able to figure out where this great funding is that you've just claimed in this audience tonight that you've secured to do it all. Have you the seen the sewage treatment is, plant? The okay. Have you seen 905? Is, the reality Have you seen is, the border crossings? Mr. Filner, I did not interrupt you. Uh, okay, I think, is, I think like, when you start lying, you need Tom, to be interrupted. Tom, I would like to finish my statement. Uh, uh, okay, I, the, you the can reality have one, is, one I just went through the results and the lack thereof for the last 20 years. And we need to ask a question, are we going to allow a mayor to run on rhetoric or on a record of getting things done, and I get things done? All right. To both of you, this question, uh, how many times have you been to Mexico this year, and where did you go? 
Carl DeMaio. I have not been to Mexico this year. I am looking forward. Uh, I am looking forward to leading a business delegation down to Mexico on the 28th, 9th, and the 30th. Um, this past year, my focus has been on finishing the job of fiscal reform, moving our city forward, making sure that we can get real pension reform in San Diego. You talk about reform as though it's a dirty word. Mr. Filner, I'm cleaning up the mess that your cronies created in San Diego. The pension crisis, our budget deficit, the fact that our infrastructure is falling apart because the money has been transferred from infrastructure programs into the pension fund, that our services have been cut like public safety, after school programs, park and rec programs, library programs, environmental protection programs, all because our pension system has gobbled up every available dollar. And so I've been cleaning up the mess. That's what reform is, and I've been doing it with the help, not of the politicians, not of the government unions that back you, but of the people, Democrats, Republicans, and independents who came together to do the right thing for San Diego. And while other cities in our state and across our country are considering bankruptcy, and are actually filing bankruptcy. San Diego is plowing forward a new path okay. of um, reform. Let's see, what, uh, what was the question? How many times have you been to Mexico this year, Bob Filner? Well, I've been, uh, every year since uh, I've been in Congress, I've traveled to Mexico uh, several times. Uh, you know, I, I first, I'm first being criticized because I'm in Washington not doing anything. Now I'm being criticized for creating the mess here. Which one is it? Am I here or in Washington? Which mess? So, uh, you know, get the story straight. Uh, but uh, I have been to Tijuana on many occasions this year. I have been to Mexico City on many occasions. I have been to uh, Merida. I have been to uh, the colonial parts of Mexico. I have, I traveled with, uh, uh, on Air Force One with President Clinton uh, to meet the President of Mexico. Uh, to sign the, uh, the merit agreement. Uh, I have seen in Washington, since he hasn't discovered these, these issues yet, as someone who's expert and ought to be. I was with the president when he flew into Mexico to, to sign a, an agreement. I was at the signing. I have been at the inauguration of many of the, uh, the last several presidents. Uh, we have worked with uh, various political parties there. Uh, in, uh, in Mexico. We have relationships with uh, the three major political parties and some of the minor ones also. Uh, so the level of understanding is, is mas mejor, Senor Carlos, uh, is mas mejor. So thank you uh, for, for allowing me to point that out. All right, well, the time is uh, 7.15. Uh, I think it is going to be almost time for Closing statements, and when we get to closing statements, uh, I believe Mr. DeMaio went first at the beginning, and so Mr. Filner will go first at the end. But first of all, a question put to Bob Filner. Why are you quitting Congress? <laughs> Could you not have a bigger impact with Mexico on a national level? Well, you know, the, the, the kernel of truth that is in Carl's uh, critique is why actually I'm leaving uh, Congress. It was a tough decision. I love the job. I think I've done a good one. I've been elected 10 times. You know, the ultimate arbiters of who does their job or not are the voters. So, uh, but because of the way the parties have divided and the way the, uh, the border caucus in particular is not looked at with uh, great favor by executive branch of either party, it's hard to get stuff done. It's really hard to get stuff done. And uh, I think we can do more uh, for the border and for many other issues as the chief executive of the eighth biggest city. 